like this messy guitar oriented music from the late 80s of hair metal, like, you know, like Guns N' Roses, Morrissey, Metallica. They kind of brought it to like a younger, like more of a wild, you know, anybody can do this kind of music, you know. And it's getting back to the traditions of like the Ramones from the 70s, that you know, a lot of um, power chord oriented music. The first album was Camp. It was released in August of 1991. Um, there were 11 songs on the original album. Um, three of the original songs, um, they were sent out as demos across the states, and they were sent out um, by original members, um, Stone Gossard and Jeff Emmett, who were previously in a band called Modern Love Phone. And they were in a band from, I think, 88 to 90. And after they released their first album, Apple, their lead singer, passed away from um, a drug overdose in 1990. So they disbanded and they kind of like, they started working on more of heavier, more rocky um, music. So they, um, they missed the, uh, um, a lead guitar player from the band called Shadow out of um, Seattle. And they sent out this demo across the States and they actually want to get a Chili Pepper drummer, Jack Byron, to join the band. And, but he was committed to, to Red Hot Chili Pepper. So he sent the demo to this basketball buddy, Eddie Vedder. And he listened to the, the demo and he went surfing. And while he was surfing, he came up with the lyrics and he went back home and he recorded it and mixed it and sent it back to Pearl Jam and they immediately just, you know, hired him for their lead vocals. Um, okay, um, so Eddie Vedder was, um, he fronted a band out of San Diego called Bad Radio. Um, and he left that band to join um, Pearl Jam. Um, they signed to Epic Records, and throughout their career, they released um, 10 albums, there are many soundtracks, and um, they kind of led the alternative music scene in a way. Um, like if you look at like a lot of movies from the 90s, like um, they're featured in like a lot of, um, you know, a lot of soundtracks, and they had like a lot of cost bands that came out after them. Um, mid 90s, late 90s, like they're kind of like a lot of um, Pearl Jam sounding bands and it kind of like, I think kind of like killed the sound of alternative the way we, the way we thought you ever heard it on the radio. Um, one point that um, Pearl Jam, they didn't like the, um, the fact that Ticketmaster um, held basic control over all ticket sales in the States and Canada. And so in 1994, they sued Pearl, uh, they for them sued Ticketmaster for uh, monopolizing um, their, their competitors, uh, their ticket sales, and they um, basically they wanted to charge like $20, you know, they wanted everybody to be a fork to come to a Pearl Jam show, but um, um, Ticketmaster had their own ideas and they added service fees and, you know, like some tickets could cost up to hundreds, you know, you know thousands of dollars. So they, um, they brought it to the U.S. Congress and it was labeled Rock and Roll Total War. And um, it went on for like a long time and like they canceled their, you know, they canceled their, their summer tour of 94 in protest and basically kind of went nowhere because they, um, they, you know, the U.S. 
Congress couldn't really, even though it's an antitrust um, legal battle, they couldn't really do anything about it. So in the end, Girl Scout had to basically get, you know, take a match of it to buy their tickets or sell their tickets, so they kind of had no choice and Ticketmaster became huge where they doubled up Live Nation, so now they're Live Nation Entertainment, which they, they basically like sell and promote almost all live music in almost the world. Um, so they're in their Buy and Earl um, album on tour, that was their about sixth album in 2000. people and towards the back of the stadium the sound went out so which propelled everybody to move forward and by everybody moving forward they crushed everybody in the front and so, so people couldn't move and people were getting trampled and security found out and they couldn't stop like they were like radioing everybody to stop the concert you know like inform Pearl Jam that this was happening and but for 15, for 15 minutes, people were getting crushed to the point where nine people died and they were like trampled to death. So, and they finally, um, Pearl Jam finally found out, they stopped the concert and everybody, you know, they backed everybody up and there were like people laying on the ground and dead. So it was pretty bad and it kind of really like hurt the band because they were really, they're really close to their, their um, fans and they really like, try to do everything for their fans and um, so they almost like quit being a fan they almost gave up and they didn't want to bother but they eventually like came back to the states and took a little break and they canceled the rest of their European tour that year but they came back home and kind of got their nerves back together and their youth career was still back on tour so they went on a, a North American tour and so that was one incident in Pearl Jam history. Pearl Jam are known for being activists. Like if you know Pearl Jam, they're always like, um, they were the ones that kind of started like with them when Napster came out and all that. Everybody was like trying to record their music. It was like all about live music, you know, like at live music at concerts. So they didn't want everybody, you know, playing crappy live versions of their music, so they actually recorded their music at each show, and after the show, they, they you know, made it, um, they basically gave them out, like, you know, people can buy them, so they, they almost, like, they've almost sold, like, um, 200, like, live shows that, that are available to their audience and fans, but a few things that Pearl Jam had been involved in were, um, uh, women's rights to, um, pro-choice. Um, they were very anti-George Bush, um, which kind of like led them to butt heads with their um, their band label, um, which was Epic Records. So after they, they left, so they, they, they just left Epic and they, um, they kind of like jumped around labels with J Records, which was owned by Sony, which became part of, um, eventually became part of RCA Records. So, um, and a couple other things that they were involved in, they started a Vitality Foundation. Um, that's a, uh, they, it's a foundation for um, nonprofit organizations. They um, raise money um, through their ticket sales and um, basically like their album sales and whatever to like, to help people like um, that are trying to make a change in the community, trying to like promote awareness, you know, things going on. They, they raise money for Hurricane Katrina. They raise money for um, the 2001 um, terrorist attack in New York City. They raise money um, for their families that you know, lost family members. And um, just recently, they were over the weekend, um, the Global Fest um, Pop Festival was held in New York City and they performed. And I caught the last end of it and um, Eddie Vedder was singing with Beyonce. <coughs> 
Bob Marley's redemption song. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Um, to this date, um, Kojama sold up to 32,000, or 32 million records in the States and worldwide 60 million, I think. So, so yeah, they've been using their influence to, um, in popular culture to affect change in society. So that's just um, my, like this is one of my favorite bands and I just wanted to share that with you. I'm just gonna read it off with a, a lyric um, from the song called Wish List. 